Um, let me start with a couple of things. Just uh, First of all, uh, somebody reminded me, and, and I appreciate you all sort of keeping me up to speed on all this, that Marvin Olasky, the author of The Tragedy of American Compassion, which I showed you a while ago, will be interviewed on C-SPAN's Book Notes program on uh, Sunday night at 8 p.m., I guess it is. So you get a chance to see Olasky personally. He's a very, very interesting guy, and, and I think you'll find it very interesting uh, to have a chance to see him. Let me also uh, suggest to you, somebody brought me, uh, one of the students brought in, uh, this is the How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. Uh, Adler wrote this, it was originally published in 1940 and then rewritten on several occasions and, and republished. And it starts with uh, how to read, you know, your first book. All the obviously have to be able to read a fair amount to be able to read it, but for parents, uh, you know, for parents it's a pretty good introduction to helping your kids read, but also it, how to read history, how to read plays, how to read practical books. I mean, Mortimer Adler, Adler was in some ways the greatest popularizing philosopher of his generation, and this was his effort uh, to, to uh, really explain how to approach books and how to get things out of them. So when we talked about active learning last time, uh, this would be this would be very very useful, and I appreciate very much uh, your bringing it in. And uh, you gave it to me, but I'm not going to loan it to Kathleen Minnick. So if you pass it back up to Dr. Minnick, so she gets to read it while I go back to Washington this week. Uh, let me also say that. I want to get into a very controversial section uh, for a few minutes. We're not going to talk about giraffes, so don't get panicked. Uh, but I want to get into talking about personal strength in some of the most difficult areas. And I want to start by arguing that personal strength applies to every American. And that literally, as I remember I said earlier, people who are born with genetic challenges, mental or physical, people who are born, uh, people who get into an accident uh, that severely uh, leaves them with a severe handicap or disability. That, that's, that's a separate challenge. I think we have to think there how we help those people and in effect give them compensatory investment in education and rehabilitation in technology in order to give them a chance to lead a full life. But if you, if you accept that very small number, I want to suggest that if you are relatively able-bodied and relatively intelligent, that's a very, very broad range. Now we're talking about probably 256 or 257 million out of the 260 million Americans. Uh, and I'm sure there'll probably be an article that analyzes exactly how many it is. Uh, but if you take that concept for the vast, overwhelming majority, that you're sort of born as a person. I used to use the word normal, but I'm told that's not correct anymore. So but you're born as, you're, you're just, you're a human being without a significant disability or a significant mental or physical challenge. That personal strength applies to you. And applies to you wherever you are today, whether you are a street person or a homeless person or you are living in poverty or you're the richest person in America. Personal strength applies to you. Now, what I want you to do is we're going to start this by looking at a, a fabulous introduction, and I should, uh, to, to Marva Collins, who uh, is a great teacher in Chicago who teaches a private school which is extraordinarily successful in exactly the same neighborhoods that the public schools are destroying the kids because they have structures that are so undisciplined, lacking in, in challenge, and, and, and they have the wrong attitude about the kids. Marva Collins is a very tough disciplinarian. And I want you to watch this story of her school, in particular look for a little girl who you'll never forget the rest of your life when you see her. You won't hear students reading about Dick and Jane at Marva Collins Westside Preparatory School in Chicago. Even for the little ones, it's back to the basics and the classics. Cleopatra and Mary, Queen of Scots, are all stories of very strong women. The classics, to me, is a real world. It's life. It's, it's about struggle. It's about hard times. It's about overcoming um, the hard times of life. It's about not quitting. While the crumbling buildings in the inner city neighborhood near the school may say quit, Mrs. Collins teaches her students that can't is just can without the T. Every child in here will tell you we do not take average papers. We tell them average people are never in short supply. If we strive for excellence, we, become, we can become all that we want to become. Great expectations prompted Collins to begin Westside Prep 15 years ago with her own money. The teacher believes that there are no poor students. There are only poor parents and poor teachers. There are more and more people who cannot raise their families in dignity and self-esteem. 
And I never intend for that to happen to any child that ever passes my way. They really do not have a choice to fail if they stay here. Since failure is not a choice here, Collins reminds students they're bright and discipline and correction are made with positive affirmations. When she says that, I love you, you're too bright to do that, they just know that they are too bright and they just stop it. It's like a magic that she has over children. At other schools, um, teachers, they didn't care. I've had teachers tell me, you know, I'm here to get my paycheck. I don't care if you get this or not. While some educators have been critical of her teaching methods, well, students do not share their skepticism. She's a fun teacher. It's a small school, but yet it has such big hearts and such expanding minds. And students of all ages have great expectations for themselves. People without vision perish. People without education don't make it very far. I learned that I can do it if I try, and that God made me so, I can, so that I can achieve, and I will achieve. Socrates taught Plato, and Plato taught uh, Alexander the Great, who said, my parents gave me life, but you taught me how to live it. And I think it just goes on and on and on, and it lives infinitely.